One thing why we're talking about energy engineers, uh, Sharon Nolan this year was energy manager of the year for AEE. So uh, just, uh, <laughs> she wouldn't bring that up herself, but. Uh, uh, so today, what I'd like to talk about is uh, information a little about Nissan and our plan in Canton, and then uh, chilled water projects that we've worked on and also compressed air projects that we've worked on. Now, uh, in North America, there's about 22,000 employees uh, divided amongst all these different facilities, and we have a, our corporate office in Franklin, Tennessee. We have a manufacturing facility in Smyrna, Tennessee, uh, an engine manufacturing in Deckard, Tennessee, and the Canton plant in Jackson, uh, in Canton, Mississippi. Now, uh, we make several different vehicles at our different plants. Uh, in our Canton plant, uh, we do the Altima, uh, we do the, uh, the Titan truck, the Frontier, uh, we do the Murano, uh, we do the LV, uh, NV passenger van and an NV cargo van. And then in Smyrna, they make uh, the Pathfinder, the, uh, the QX60, the Infinity version, uh, the Rogue, uh, the Altima, the Leaf, and the Maxima. And so it's just something that we deal with a lot of different vehicles through our plants uh, all the time. Uh, and as mentioned, uh, by Sharon, uh, her plant or her company was recognized as Energy Star Partner of the Year, uh, Sustained Excellence, and we were also recognized for Nissan, uh, our eighth one this, uh, this year. Uh, also, one of the things that uh, Energy Star has is plant certification. And this is our last plant certification that we received, and it's a great way to get pictures with your higher ups, uh, something to celebrate. Uh, another thing that we had at our facility, we had our four millionth vehicle roll off the line uh, last year. Uh, so, and our plant started in 2003 is when we started production. Uh, one of the things that Nissan has let me do was to reach out to, this, uh, to the, uh, some of the schools in the area. One of the, school, uh, one of the counties ranking school, uh, they actually have an energy manager in their school system, and he helps their schools save money. Uh, uh, the last I got was $600,000 a year that his program is saving the county because of ener uh, energy projects. And these schools, I was able to go in and use my PE uh, to certify. Uh, and then uh, uh, what was interesting, the EPA reached out to us and said, in Mississippi, you got the second most pro bono uh, Energy Star certifications in the country. Uh, and those were all done by Nissan for those county schools. So just something that we've been able to do to reach out to the community. Now, as mentioned, uh, we do have a very large chiller plant. Uh, we have 25,000 ton capacity, and we also have 35,000 uh, uh, CFM capacity, all in this one facility. Uh, uh, so 10 each, 2,550 ton chillers, uh, 12 each, 200 horsepower secondary chilled water pumps, 6 each, 5,000 CFM air compressors, 2 each, 2,500 CFM air compressors, and 13 each, 150 condensing water pumps. Uh, we can draw in the summertime a hot, humid day, 16.6 .6 megawatts of power uh, to run our facility all coming from this one plant. So one of the things that we're always looking for is opportunities to save. Uh, something that's out there that we can save energy on. One of the things was we have uh, a fascia facility and they had 210 tons of, of air-cooled chillers that they were using to cool their uh, uh, injection molding machines. And on the bottom, you see this little silver thing. Well, that's a heat exchanger, and we were able to replace those 210 tons of heat, uh, cooling 
with that one heat exchanger using our chilled water from the cup, uh, Canton Utility Plant. And what that was is uh, because of the uh, efficiency, uh, the water-cooled chillers were way more efficient than the air-cooled chillers. The coefficient of performance was like three times better, and so it was a way uh, we learned about it at a conference, and we went and did the research, and were able to show that we could have a payback for this project. And if you can see this graph, this is the power draw that the chillers were drawing. And you can see when they shut them off, and it, the power just seems to drop. Well, that's when the, the air-cooled chillers were shut off for their power draw. Now, it's very interesting when you're working with people, sometimes they're willing to work with you and sometimes they say, no, this will never work. Well, this was, the, uh, this was very interesting. In this case, you can see right here, uh, they turned it on without telling me uh, one day just to show that it wasn't going to work. And then they wait, wait a couple days and call and say, when are we gonna turn this on? So this project, uh, basically, it, it saved uh, about uh, anywhere from, uh, it's, it's about $100,000 a year savings, and it costs just over $100,000 to put in. So less than, it, I mean, very good payback on a project. Another thing that we've been able to do is uh, evap chilling, uh, where we use the cooling tower to run through heat exchangers uh, and shut off chillers. Uh, and so this is the, the heat exchangers after they were installed. And, and basically what happened, why this project was so available for us was, we had, uh, uh, we used to have 12 chillers, but we had done other projects that had reduced our chiller load, and so the most we ever ran during the summer was eight and possibly nine. Uh, our sister plant in Smyrna was expanding, and they thought it'd be best just to borrow my chillers than to buy their own. And so they took out two of my chillers at this time, and it left me all the piping that, to make this project really easy to do. I didn't have to add to the building. Uh, I, did, I had the pump still, and so it was just, uh, it made it uh, easier for us to be able to do this project. Uh, and so what we did is, you can see the top corner uh, up on the top uh, left, you can see there's a green pump on. And so that pump is circulating water through the heat exchangers and out to the process. And then we also have uh, the chilled water coming, or cooled water coming from our tower into the other side of the heat exchanger to cool them. And so uh, heat, uh, kilowatts per ton is the way everybody shows how a, a chiller plant is running. And so right here, we are at 0.33 kilowatts per ton when we are in our uh, free cooling or evap chilling mode. And so a very successful project. Uh, and so you might say you live in, you're working Mississippi's, but uh, still there's 200 days a year where the temperature's below 66 degrees. And so it works about, out to about 1800 hours a year that we're able to say, uh, to go to the EV, e EVAP cooling uh, capability uh, and 1.4 million kilowatt hours saved. Uh, at six cents per kilowatt hour, that's $86,000 a year saved, and the project costs 95,000, so just barely over a year payback. Uh, and so kilowatts per ton is the driver. And recently, uh, this is our uh, energy dashboard for our chiller plant. And it shows our uh, power total kilowatts per ton, uh, chiller uh, kilowatts, condenser water pumps, uh, uh, chilled water pumps, and cooling tower fans, all added up for the total for the chiller plant. And so one of the things that we've been able to work in is we've been in the Energy Star Automobile Focus Group. 
Uh, this is a group where we meet uh, once or twice a year, and we meet with people from GM and Toyota, uh, Chrysler, uh, Honda, uh, and any other automobile manufacturer that would like to come. And what we do is we talk about what we're doing to save energy at our plants. It's very interesting. Uh, these are competition, but because we're only talking in million BTUs, uh, nobody gets uh, their feelings hurt and we get ideas from them uh, on what we can do on our next project. And one of the examples was this gentleman, uh, Fazy, uh, from Chrysler at the time mentioned that they were doing chiller optimization. And so we contacted, uh, they shared the company that they were working with and we reached out to them. And through this contact, we were able to get the, a company in to be able to do our chiller optimization. And this is our chiller plant. I'm sorry for how small the, le uh, the numbers are, but what it has is it on each of these chillers, it has a kilowatts per ton. And it's amazing what that number does for us in being able to do maintenance and also to know our efficiency. Because if a uh, chiller's kilowatts per ton starts to rise, we know that we have a problem with that chiller. Uh, and so maintenance needs to start looking at it to see what we can do. Uh, and so we were able to, with this, this is something, actually we have dashboards now in a lot of plants at our, at our facility, and this is something that's over my desk that I can look at. So I can ask questions when there's something uh, also that's not, that, uh, that I see and ask why it's uh, occurring. Uh, and so this is our cooling towers uh, uh, showing the pumps. And one of the things that we did is we added variable speed drives to all the condenser water pumps for the tower. And also one of the program parts was that all the pumps would ramp up and ramp down together so that you have your most efficient uh, mode of operation. Now, this is the six steps that uh, processes that we went through uh, for our, uh, our chiller optimization. And it's about 9.8 million kilowatt hours is what they projected that we would save. Uh, and at six cents, that's a half a million dollars a year savings that we could generate from this project. And so, we, we implemented the project and we monitored our numbers for the first year and we didn't meet the goal the first year. And the problem was uh, the weather. We had a hot, hot, humid August and so we had no savings because of how we had to run the equipment just to, pro to provide cooling for our uh, paint shops. Uh, so, but the bottom line, our kilowatts per ton, 0.69. That was better than they said they could even do for us. Uh, so this is something that ha we have been able to do at our facility, and it's something that if you have chiller plants, this is something that works uh, also. Uh, after we implemented the chiller uh, optimization, our, our neighbor up the street in Smyrna and Deckard, they also implemented a chiller optimization. Now, of these three chiller projects, it adds up to about $1.8 million we've saved so far since the op uh, uh, operation and 30 million kilowatt hours, uh, 12,000 metric tons of CO2. So, very successful projects. Now, another thing that we have is we have large air compressors. This is a 5,000 CFM air compressor that we have to supply compressed air for the pr production of our, uh, our vehicles. Now, <laughs> uh, we had uh, another company come in and talk to us about chiller opti uh, control optimization for our air compressors. And this is the control op optimization. Uh, one of the problems with air compressor plants is that 
as it ramps up and ramps down, you can go to a point where you're blowing off lots of air. Uh, if you can, uh, with these controls that they had, they looked at the isotropic head and were able to adjust the compressors so that we weren't blowing off. Uh, the controls were very successful. In fact, they lowered our power draw on our air compressors by four amps. That doesn't sound much, but that's four amps of 4160 volt power is what these uh, air compressors were running on. Uh, so also uh, last month at the AEE World Conference and Expo, uh, there was a, a presentation where they talked about uh, nine ways that you can improve your air compressor uh, systems. One of the uh, leading one was uh, controls. Another one was water. Another one was monitoring and getting the word out when things are how things are going this is our compressed air usage and this was back uh, in august you can see we have a goal to go below uh, 7000 cfm on the weekends but we weren't getting there and so this is something that was brought up to management and management brought it to all the separate plants and asked them what they could do. And so we started working on this to lower it. Uh, and by middle September, uh, because of management's support, uh, we were able to get it now under uh, uh, 7,000. So eliminating, uh, waste or leaks is one of the nine items they brought up. Another one is improper use of compressed air. In this first picture on the, the top, you see these yellow uh, uh, little fan things that are there. Well, that's compressed air. Uh, there was about 500 CFM of compressed air that they're blowing off these uh, off our vehicles before they go into the painting operation. And so we uh, reached out to a company called uh, Air Force One and they have blowers, high pressure blowers that you use air, uh, I mean, not compressed air, but they pressurize air, filtered air, and they blow off the vehicle. And this is the, the replacement that we now have in place to replace 500 CFM of compressed air use. So eliminating uh, unwanted uses is another thing that we've been able to do uh, to save compressed air. Um, and that's, uh, and one other project that we have coming forward is uh, we have air dryers that are desiccant dryers that take the compressed air down to uh, a minus 40 dew point in order to feed the painting operation in our paint plants. And so this is an uh, over 15 years, well, close to, yeah, it's over 15 years old and it's having trouble being, uh, maintaining and cycling and all this. And so we've reached out to multiple companies and have come up with a, a new dryer uh, that does not use compressed air as uh, a way to dry the media before. Uh, and so this one will use a, a heated uh, blower system to dry the media rather than compressed air. And that's about uh, 800 CFM that we're going to reduce there. Uh, so eliminating uh, any use of compressed air where you can are some of the things that we've been able to do also. Uh, so. Thank you.